Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the, the Keepers, Keepers of, of the Books, books your online librarians. And we're here with another weekly reads. But first, we're going to start off with bookish news. Sarah J. Moss's Throne of Glass series has been optioned for a TV series on Hulu. So you can watch with that. The other bookish news is Shadowhunters, the Mortal Instruments series. Remember? Season 2 has just started. It started on the 2nd, so you probably can still catch the first episode before the next one airs. It airs on Freeform, and that's an ABC channel. Our first book is The Shark Curtain by Chris Schofield. This wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was still very well written. This is about a 14-year-old named Lily Asher, and she's schizophrenic, so she hears the voice of a wisecracking, not your typical Jesus, in her head. It's kind of her way of dealing with her very dysfunctional family. She also thinks she's turning into a dog. And her mom's an alcoholic substance abuser who's having an affair. Her father is a gambler who's hardly ever there. They try to help her, but they're too wrapped up in trying to fix their own lives. And her sister thinks she's just plain crazy and weird. She's trying to deal with all this and try and figure out who she is. And as she starts to make friends, she starts to kind of figure out where she fits into everything. A couple heads up warnings. It does openly talk about sexuality. It has a lot of drug and alcohol use in it. So this is definitely for grades 10 and up or 16, 17 and up. If you like realistic fiction, things that have a very realistic look at how mental illnesses look in books, you'll like this one. That's The Shark Curtain by Chris Schofield. And this was set in 1960s in Portland, Oregon, and it is a review copy from Akashic Books. I'm gonna start with a young one. This is Star Wars Attack of the Clones, and it is, as you can see, an early reader type book, and it comes with a CD narrated by, of course, your Star Wars people, Michael D. Hanks, and the voice talents of Ian McDermott, Frank Oz, Natalie Portman, Hayden Christensen, Ewan McGregor, and Christopher Lee. You know what happens in Attack of the Clones, so I don't know if I really need to go into this too much, but of course you have, at the beginning, you have Senator Padme, who's gone to the Galactic Senate, and she's there. There's been a trap, of course, and then you have Obi-Wan and Anakin, who have to go in and protect her. You'll recognize these scenes from the movie, then Anakin and Padme, of course, go off to his homeland to see how his parents are doing on Tatooine. This is a fun one. Again, you have the read-along CD. This is a really good one for kids of really any age who are at this reading level. The story is universal, so even if you have a lower reader who needs a CD to listen to while they read to help them along, this is perfect for any age in that situation. Ever the Hunted by Erin Summerall. Britta is our main character. Her mother was from Sheridan, and her father, Mary married her, but everybody in Malam considers her illegitimate because the mother was not from Malam. So when her father is brutally murdered, the government comes to take her land away and in the process they catch her poaching, which is illegal on the king's land. She's given a choice, either being executed or she has to find Koahin, who is an old friend from her childhood who the government believes murdered her father. As she tr starts tracking him down because she's an expert tracker and Hunter, she starts to realize that Cohen didn't do it. In comes Cohen. He was the king's bounty hunter, and now he's on the run, and he's trying to figure out what really happened to her father and which government official framed him for the murder. You have this novel with action, adventure, romance, intrigue, and a little bit of mystery. Almost impossible to put down. Very action-packed, and it's a page-turner for sure. This I would recommend for grades 8 and up just because it involves a lot of close calls with males trying to attack her sexually, as well as it being very violent. This is great for fans of Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss, as well as Kristen Kishore's Grace Link. Even for those who like a little bit of J.R.R. Tolkien, has a great world building along with the fantasy adventure and such that I mentioned. So grades 8 and up or 13 and up. And that was a review book from Houghton Milton Harcourt. Next, I have Star Wars Adventures in Wild Space. This is a new series that comes out in January 2017. This comes after the Clone Wars and Emperor Palpatine is in charge. It starts with the snare. This is Milo and Lena. They're flying their parent starship, the Whisperbird. The parents have been kidnapped. And what I really like is just this cute little attention to detail at the beginning of the book. It looks like the movie on the first page. Milo and Lena Graff, they're trying to rescue their parents and they end up 
basically crashing on a planet. They're trying to ask an old friend for help and the evil camp Captain Corda has set a trap for them. This book is completely action packed. It seems like the action never stops moving. The entire book is just a page turner. So it's gonna be great for reluctant readers, boys or girls, because you have a main character that's a boy and a main character that's a girl. Their droid is, it's pretty helpful. You know, it's got those weird little droid tendencies. <laughs> so it's just a really good action packed adventure Star Wars book. They're not necessarily characters that you know, which is kind of interesting. But what I really like about this is I haven't seen a lot of Star Wars books at this particular level. So I really think that this completes the entire level. Basically, now you have Star Wars from easy readers to adult. And the only thing I haven't seen are too many Star Wars board books for babies, <laughs> but there are a few. Okay, there are Star Wars board books for babies, so you have Star Wars for every level now. Grades two for your really good readers through six, which is going to be ages seven through 12, depending on the reading level. And the other th great thing is it is so action packed short chapters, you have some white space and a few pictures in there. You're going to be able to use this as a high-low as well because of the story and it doesn't really go into their ages even though they're kids you don't get the sense that they're really young because they're flying a spaceship. You could go with your high-low readers in junior high for this one and it would work just fine. Book two, of course they get out of this trap. Book two, again they're crash landing on a planet and they end up in this wild kind of planet. There's a radio broadcast coming from it. It's a rebel transmission, so they're trying to track that transmission to see if these people will help them. They're stuck, stuck in this jungle planet. They find another ship. They're trying to see if they can use that crashed ship to repair their ship. Of course, there are more dangers there. There's another ship coming up to find them, and we'll leave it there. Book three is going to come out. It is going to be called The Heist. And those are review copies from Disney Lucasfilm Press. Once Upon a Dream by Liz Braswell. We all know the story of Sleeping Beauty, but what if the prince fell asleep before he could kiss Aurora? That's just the beginning of what this book starts with. Because the prince didn't kiss her and wake her up, now Aurora has to, in her dream, defeat the Castle of Thorns herself. But to add an extra twist into it, when the prince fell asleep, he fell into her dream world. And so they have to work together to get out of this dastardly trap that Maleficent set for them. If I say more than that, I'm gonna to totally spoil it because it's very different than anything you would expect. Fun fantasy adventure with fairy tale retelling, even with a little bit of romance. I thoroughly enjoyed this. The other ones in the series that are different fairy tales, A Whole New World and Out of Abaton were both also really good. If you liked those ones or you haven't read them yet, go read them. And this I would say is for grade seven and up. You could go as low as fifth grade. It's just the plot's a little more complex and it will appeal more to the older age range or 12 and up. Review copy, this is from Disney Press. So thanks for sending it to us. Far From You by Tess Sharp. This one is about Sophie Winters. When she was 14 years old, she was in a really bad car accident. Her best friend Mina's brother, Trev, was driving the car, and so he feels guilty. She ends up with an oxy addiction at 14. It gets worse and worse, and Mina and Trev are very worried about her. She gets clean from that, and you're following two timelines. So you have the past timeline that goes all the way up to the present. It says very specifically at the beginning of each chapter where in time you are, so you do need to read that. And then at 17, her and Mina are going up to somewhere and Mina is murdered. Now, the cops aren't listening to her because whoever murdered Mina planted a bottle of Oxy in Sophie's jacket and they got her fingerprints on it and stuff because she's out cold, doesn't wake up for a while. Basically, you have Sophie in the past dealing with her drug addiction and Sophie in the past dealing with her bisexuality. Then you have Sophie in the present trying to deal with the murder of her best friend that she loved so much. She starts digging into this murder and things just get more and more complicated. Of course, you know she's gotta be in danger because she's looking into something, that, but she doesn't know what she's necessarily looking into in the beginning. Just that Mina you know, was looking into this and she has to figure out everything from scratch that the police didn't figure out. You have some sexual content in there. You have some LGBT content. The language is moderate. You do have murder, you have open talk talk about drugs and dealing with those. It doesn't paint drugs in a happy light. It paints them in a teen trying to overcome her past as an addict. 
This is a great realistic fiction book and it just really paints dealing with these problems in a real fairly realistic light for teens because they do have to deal with the getting off of the addiction, the murder of a friend, death of loved ones, that sort of thing. So I think a lot of teens are really going to like this book. Grades nine and up or ages 15 and up. And this is a review book from Hyperion. Thank you, Hyperion. The Legend of the Rift by Peter Larangis. Heads up, this is gonna have some spoilers because they can't do it with kids. You really have to have read the first four to be able to read this one. So fast forward to the next book if you haven't read the first four books in the Seven Wonders of the World series. In this book, Jack, Marco, Cass, and Allie, you'll remember from the first four, they've been trying to find the seven loci, which are the magic orbs underneath the Seven Wonders of the World. And in the last book, Allie was kidnapped by King Ular, and they went through a rift in time along with one of the loci. So now it's up to the Jack, Marco, and Cass to try and find the other remaining magic orbs so they can save Allie and save themselves and the world. Action-packed book full of fantasy and adventure, lots of world building, highly complex characters, really make you chuckle in a few places. If you like fantasy adventure with action, you'll like this book. This is a review book from HarperCollins and it is for grades 5 to 9 or for a more advanced reader 4 to 9. That would be ages 8 all the way up to about 14, 15 years old. And it's also from Kiss the Book. Kiss the Book blogspot.com so thanks for the review book. Next two books are going to go together so I'm going to do them back to back. This is The Stars Never Rise by Rachel Vincent and you have a mild amount of language, you have paranormal, you have demons who can turn people into degenerates because they eat their souls so you kind of have a zombie-like element to it although it's not zombies and they're not eating people's brains out. There is some violence so I'm gonna say PG-13 but I am gonna say ages 12 and up or grade 7 and up for this book and it's a review book from De La Court Press and Kiss the Book, kissthebook.blogspot.com. This is about 16 year old Nina and she's at a point where she's worried about her future and what she's gonna do because she has to take care of her sister Melly. And their mom is a drug addict and she's pretty much just gone and out of it. And they're in a world, a new temperance, and it's a community that's run by the church. It is post demon apocalypse. There was a war between the demons and the humans and the demons can still consume the people's bodies and eat their souls. And the church has exorcists that are supposed to send the demons back to hell. Nina has a secret that she hasn't figured out at the beginning of the book and this secret as she discovers it is going to change her entire worldview. She's not going to really know who to trust anymore. It's a really good story and it's very unique. I've never read anything quite exactly like this and this take on putting like the zombie-like creatures together and the demons together and the humans. It's good. One thing you do need to know about Melly is Melly is a little bit of a rebel and so it's up to Nina to keep her in line. Definitely a good read. If you like any of Rachel Vincent's other books, or if you like those other angel books that you've read, you know there's a lot of them, you will like this book. If you like fantasy, you will like this book. If you like the Iron King series, those are fairy books but you will still like this one. So The Stars Never Rise by Rachel Vincent. Book two. I have to spoil book one to review this. If you have not read book one and you want to and you don't want to be spoiled, please fast forward to Kira's next book, The Reader. The Flame Never Dies by Rachel Vincent. So you have 16 year old Nina and you have Maylee and Maylee is 15, she is pregnant and they are on the run from the church. Not only that, they have other exorcists with them as we found out at the end of the book. They are in the middle of the Badlands and they have to not only survive, they have to figure out how to get the baby a soul since the Well of Souls is pretty much always empty. You have Finn who obviously wants to travel with them. This book definitely went places that I did not expect. <laughs> Again, it's a page turner, it's a good book and definitely grades seven and up or ages 12 and up. If you read book one, you will need to read book two. I really, really liked the ending. I thought it was very fun and it would be a really good movie. You can just see them going around and doing what they're doing and it would just be like the best montage scene <laughs> ever. <laughs> so Nina's 17 in this book, not 16 like she was in the last one. They're fugitives, they're rogues, they're trying to survive. You still have the demons taking over their bodies and yet they're exorcists and they're learning their powers. Then you put the baby on the way. That is The Flame Never Dies by Rachel Vincent. And that's a duet. So that'll be the last book in the series. The Reader by Tracy Chi. In this book you have our main two main characters, Sophia and Nin. A 
previous point in the before this book started, this is book one, Sophia's father was brutally murdered, and we don't exactly know why, but there is definitely a reason behind it as it reveals later, so I won't spoil it. A little ways into the first couple chapters, Nin, her sister, who's a little bit older, gets kidnapped, and she's kidnapped by the same people who murdered the father. Now it's up to Sophia to figure out where her sister's disappeared to before it's too late, and the only clue she has is a mysterious box her sister left behind. So she enlists the help of another boy in the community to figure out how to solve this puzzle that this box is. Will they succeed? This book has a lot of action, as well as world building fantasy adventure with a little bit of romance. If you like books that have really complex characters, so if you like books where there's complex characters who are unreliable narrators, you'll like the reader. This is for grade seven and up or even eight and up just because you do have a brutal murder in there. That's off page, but you tend to see some of the facts related to it as time goes on. This will be for grades eight and up or ages 13 and up. Erasing Time by CJ Hill. This one jumps between two different time periods that are 400 years apart. The siblings, Sheridan and Taylor, are twins. And when they get pulled into the future by a time strainer from 400 years in the future, they find out that twins are basically extremely rare and aren't supposed to happen. So they have to keep that on the DL in the book. And it's also in a world where the government's definitely been lying to the citizens and they're actually tracking them. They weren't supposed to be the ones that were pulled into the future. A scientist man by the name of Tyler Sherwood was supposed to be the one that came through. So already they got a lot of strikes against them and it's up to them to escape from the city controlled by the government before it's too late. Will they succeed or will they get back to their own time period? If you like time travel adventure with big brother type government, you'll like this book. So this would be for like Hunger Games fans, matched by Ali Condi, The Testing by Charbonneau. It has a lot of world building, very action packed, but it has very well developed characters. I would recommend this for grade seven and up or ages 12 and up. You could go lower as low as sixth grade. It's just it's a little bit more complex plotting. And if they're a little more mature, they'll be able to handle that just fine. This is a review book from HarperCollins and Kiss the Book, kissthebook.blogspot.com. So that is our first weekly reads for 2017. And we did cover some of the books from December in there. We do have a few more left that we haven't reviewed for you yet just because of time limitations. They will be coming up very soon. What book are you looking forward to reading the most in 2017? Please put that in the comments below. Up above, you'll see our icon. You can hit on that just to get to a subscribe button or there's always one below on the videos. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any questions for the librarians, please put those in the comments. We do address those in our videos or in the comments. Thank you everybody and happy reading for 2017. Bye. Bye.